Hello, and welcome to another episode of my Type 35 build. With all the action of late taking place in the passenger's compartment, let me take a stroll back and show off the latest developments. See what's new? Oh no! There's aluminum! And it's everywhere! With the majority of the chassis work done, I've been able to start installing the interior panels, beginning with the rear bulkhead and belly pan, which I thought about making from aluminium, but that stuff is really pricey to import from England, so I decided to use the more domestic aluminum, which I could source locally. The bulkhead itself, made from 063 sheet, isn't just a decorative way to separate the cockpit from the rear suspension. It's actually a structural panel. It's like those department store bookcases that are all flimsy until you nail that paperboard backing on, then they're as solid as a rock. Same premise here. The rear boat tail was pretty flimsy and would bend when you put any kind of pressure against it. One aluminum panel later and it's as solid as a tank. So when you grab a hold of it and push or pull, rather than it bending, the whole rear end of the car moves. It's really impressive how much of a difference it made. It's held in place with a handful of bolts, two attaching the passenger's lower corner, one on either side of the drive shaft, mostly to keep the panel from flexing, which would have made a sound like the Flubbermobile, which is cool, but only if you're driving a Model T, and two more on the lower driver's corner. The panel was trimmed a little narrow along the frame sides to allow room for the brackets that were welded on. Then up top, there's a row of bolts that attach the boat tail to the bulkhead panel itself. There was quite a bit of time spent trimming the panel to shape. I had a depth set inside the boat tail that I wanted it to sit at, and I wanted a real tight gap around the body, so there was a lot of trim and fit, trim and fit, trim and fit, until it just snicked in there real clean. I also had to trim out around the drive shaft for clearance there. Pretty simple stuff. Just a compass to scribe an arc out so the radius is about a half inch greater than the top of the drive shaft at full suspension compression. Then there's the awesomeness. One of those innocuous little things that ends up being infinitely cooler than expected. For the interior so far, it'd be this pass-through and the bulkhead. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but just look at it. It's so awesome. And it serves a purpose beyond just looking cool. It allows you to reach back and adjust the ride height, adjust the upper control arm angles, adjust the tension on the shock absorbers, all without having to remove the tail off the car. Plus, when you're showing the car off, it allows people to peek in and get a look at the rear suspension, the frame and rear cross members, the gas tank, the mounting brackets, all stuff that would otherwise be hidden from view. After the bulkhead came the floor pan, also made out of aluminum, but this time from 8th inch thick sheet, which sounds all big and heavy, especially if you got steel on the brain, but it doesn't really weigh anything. The reason for the floor pan being thicker than the bulkhead is because of the weight it needs to support. When you get in and out of the car, on both the driver's and passenger side, you'll actually be standing on the floor pan itself right between the first and second cross members, and I wanted to make sure it was strong enough. Plus, there'll be a series of two-inch stainless steel washers under the pan to keep the bolt heads from pulling through. The floor was trimmed out to match the curve of the body, which isn't a very clean line. When the panel is out of the car, the edges look almost rough cut, but when it's installed, it follows all the little deviations in the rockers like a tailored stitch. The floor extends forward under the transmission and into the engine compartment, up to just where the transmission case bolts to the bell housing, which is where the return that'll join the firewall and the belly pan will reside. 
and will actually make about two-thirds of the transmission sitting inside the passenger's compartment. I like the way the transmission extends into the cockpit over the floor pan instead of having it hit under a transmission tunnel like every other car you see. It should look pretty stellar once the interior is all in. With the floor trimmed out, you can see how much room there is under the seats for storage. Still haven't figured out what kind of box or basket I'm going to use, but you can see it's going to be pretty good sized. At the rear of the pan, I left a few inches sticking out past the back cross member, an inch or so beyond the rear of the scuttle, so I'll have a flap to attach a rear section of belly pan that'll enclose the underside of the boat tail. I also welded in a couple seat mounting brackets at the base of the rear bulkhead. They've had a slit cut in them on the passenger's and driver's side. The seat back will rest on the bracket with a tab that'll slot down through it and hold the lower seat back into position. Which brings us full circle back to the bulkhead. It's neat how something so thin added so much rigidity. I kind of wonder if the floor plate will have the same effect on the chassis. Or at least I would be wondering that if I wasn't so enamored by the pass-through in the bulkhead. I just want to stick my hands in there and play with stuff. 